What I'd like to do now is give you an overview of the program editor. Actually, we're going to get a little bit in depth as to how to make sounds on the PC3. I have before me the most powerful synthesizer you can have. And you can take the sound, for example, of a snare drum. Okay, here's a snare drum. You can take that and you can make it sound like thunder. You can take the sound of the Seattle Symphony Orchestra and you can make it sound like this. Now, how do you do that? Let's start by uh, taking the default program, which is 999. This is basically uh, the program that has no parameters set at all, so that we know that when we start editing, there's nothing that's programmed that we don't know about. And I hit the Edit button. Uh, and whenever you're on uh, scrolled to an object, in this case it was a program, and I hit the edit button, then I enter the program editor. And this is uh, where we're going to stay for a little while. Uh, you can see at the top of the display I'm editing the program, and the page that I'm on is called the key map page. What is a key map? A key map is the one thing that you can't program as the PC3 user. It's the sounds that we gave you that have been mapped across the keyboard as one group of multi samples. So in this case, it's the piano, the forte sample of the piano, and it's been mapped across the keyboard according to how it sounds most natural. But there are, is no programming at all, as you notice. It's not even in stereo at the moment. The key map page is where we select which key map we're going to use. I'm going to select one called marimba. in order to do this first example. Just below, you can see that uh, there's a, a transpose parameter. And this is where I can actually transpose the key map as it plays on this thing. And now I see there's a key tracking parameter. The key tracking tells us how much the key is going to adjust this key map transposition. And you see it's 100 cents per key. That's the same as one semitone. Notice if I turn this off, I have a layer that plays just by itself and no, no, if I turn it backwards, we will actually go down as I play up the keyboard and up as I go down the plate. Say, I've, say 50 cents per key and I've got a microtonal instrument. Let's leave that at 100 cents per key. Velocity tracking will assign velocity to this transposition too. So if I have a high setting here, it's going to play a different sample and pitch on different velocities. Let's leave that one at zero. For now, let's leave the key map page because we've selected the key map we want. And I'm going to set 100 cents per key on the tracking. Now, the next page is called the layer page. These are the conditions on which this layer is going to play. You can see that my program only has one layer. That I'm editing layer one of one. But the power of the PC3 lies in the fact that each program can have 32 layers. They can overlap on the keys. They can play on different conditions. They can be split. Uh, they can be, really be presented any way you want. Um, so here I have one layer that plays right across the keyboard. I have a low key and a high key. Why don't I set that? I could actually type a MIDI key number, 60 would be C4, that's middle C, or I could scroll, or I can also hold the enter button and just type the key that I want. So I'm going to say that the low key is C4 and the high key is C4, and here I just have a layer that plays on one key. Down below I have a low vel and high vel, and I can actually set a velocity range for when this instrument will play. It only plays mezzo forte to triple forte. Let's set those back to normal. Low key, now I'm back to playing all across the keyboard. I'm setting, as you can see on this page, all the conditions in which this particular layer is going to play. Now I have a delay control. And the delay control is going to come into play in a second. First, I've done some editing already. I've actually set up my uh, marimba the way I wanted. So what I want to do is save this. So the best way to uh, save a program is to, is to, you can find, by the more pages, you can actually find a name, save, and delete, dump set of 
soft buttons that will enable us to name and save this program. You can also jump there directly by hitting the exit button, in which case you get a dialog asking to save first, just like any computer program. And in this case, I get to rename it, which is a very good idea right now. We'll call this a test, T-E-S-T. -E I get pretty good at typing the numbers directly, the alphanumeric characters directly with the keypad. But you can also use the alpha dial to scroll. So I say OK, and it says save test as uh, ID number 1092. What it has done is found the first free for me. It's found the first free space. Uh, so I'll just say OK, because that's fine. Now I, at the end of my list, I have this program called test, and it's a marimba. Now, my idea is I want this marimba to play in octaves every time I play the key. That's a simple edit I want to be able to make, and I want to show you how to do that. So let's edit this program again and do something further with it. We've touched the key map, and we've touched the layer pages. Now let's scroll back the soft buttons past the name, save, delete, dump into the, into the areas where I can control how many layers are in this program. What I'd like to do is duplicate this layer, and then I'll change the transposition, and then I'll have a marimba that plays in octaves. So very good. So here we have duplicate layer, and I touch that. The current layer has been duplicated. Now I see along the top line that it's layer two of two that I'm editing. The machine is playing two marimbas at once, but they're panned the same, and they're playing exactly the same, so at best I'm going to hear a little bit of flanging, but I haven't done anything significant yet. But let's go to the key map page, and let's change the transposition of this second layer. Nice, now I have. That's very good. Now, before I do anything else, why don't I save that again? So I hit exit, and it'll ask me to save, and I'll just say yes. And this time, it'll ask me to replace the existing, because I've already edited it. And I'll say yes, and so we're good to go. So, so far, what we have done is we've learned how to name and save programs. We've used uh, one of the soft buttons that controls how many layers can be in a program. And we have looked at the key map page. Let's go back to the layer page also, and I want to show you the delay control. When you have more than one layer, oftentimes we want one of the layers to be delayed just a bit, and this gives us a full sound. Uh, just like the chorus effect does, if you have a, a two layers that are similar and they're delayed slightly, it'll give you a very full sound. And I would like to delay the second hit of this marimba just to make the sound a little more interesting. Uh, my delay control uh, has a a list, it was called the control source list, and you can see that every MIDI controller number is in there, and there's many other uh, ideas like attack velocity can be part of this. Uh, but I'm going to say that the mod wheel is going to control the delay. That's uh, control number one, and I just touch one enter for that. Now the mod wheel is going to control the delay of this, this first layer. The next two parameters are related, min delay and max delay. So the, this layer is going to be delayed um, when the mod wheel is at minimum, by how many seconds? And here, how about this? If I say 0 0.01 seconds, I have a tenth of a second delay when the mod wheel is at minimum. Maybe I want a longer delay when the mod wheel is at maximum. Why don't we say an entire second? That would be a thousand milliseconds, and I type that directly. And if I move the mod wheel now, I have that second layer, or that first layer, is delayed by exactly one second. You will find this throughout the PC3 and every Kurzweil interface for editing. You will find that we use exact units so that you can be very specific about the things that you want to do. I like a little delay, so I'll print the mod wheel maybe halfway, and I have... Now I have kind of an interesting sound. And why don't we save that one? So I hit exit, and it asks me to save and replace, and there I have it. So now we've been introduced to the concepts of how to select a key map on a layer, how to make another layer, and how to use some of the parameters on the layer page which control how the layer behaves as a layer, including delay. We've also seen that when you can have a control source uh, controlling a parameter in the machine, you can have a minimum depth and a maximum depth that controls, that gives you a, a precise uh, scaling 
uh, for the control you're using. That's very good. Uh, now let me show you one other concept. Let me select a, an example of a, of a program that I really like. It's called West Coast Piano and Pad. This is, I like this because, um, because I have sort of a dry piano here, but the pad behind it is very wet and playable. It's actually made of four different layers, this pad. I can see uh, on, the, on the program mode display page, if I hold enter and move the channel buttons, I can see f uh, layers five through seven are using the various uh, non-piano sounds. So I like layer four through seven. I like that. And what I'd like to do is maybe select it for this, this electric piano. Crossfade Belltone Rhodes. This is a beautiful Rhodes. What I'd like to do is I'd like to import those nice pad layers into this program and make a crossfade bell tone Rhodes that has the same pad that I like from that other program. So why don't I edit this program? And you'll see that I can see the key map that's on layer one of this program. And there are five layers in this program. They're all uh, Rhodes key maps based. And maybe we'll look at the, on the layer page, we could see what the, maybe the, some of the ranges of the different layers are set to different things. Again. Since programs can be very complex, it's not always easy to adjust something small on a complicated program that was built by somebody else. But there are things you want to be able to do, and that is, for example, borrow some layers and build your own multi-layer sound. So let's do just that. Let me scroll back on the More buttons until I see Import Layer, and I'll say Import Layer. And it's going to ask me, what program do you want to import from? And we found it over here at program 134 called West Coast Piano and Pad. And we would like layers 4 through 7. So I'll just select layer 4 and I'll say import. Oh, there it is. The layer's been imported. Now I have part of that pad that's been imported. I'm just going to go ahead and import from the same one again. I want 4, 5. I want layer 5 imported. I want layer 6 imported. And I want layer 7 imported. And now Crossfade Belltone Rhodes has nine layers. And it has the same pad that I had on this other program. Very nice. I'll hit exit. And now it asks me to save this program. And I will say rename. And I will maybe I'll give it my initial G. And so this is my version of this program. I just inserted a character, and uh, now I'll say OK. And it's going to ask me for the first relocation, and I say yes. And here I am building my own list of sounds that I like. I have a mod wheel controlled delay marimba, and I have my tweaked up electric piano with a tweaked up pad sound added to it. Next we're going to talk about how the signal path works in the program editor and how you can actually change the sound with the vast synthesizer that's on board the PC3.